Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. And Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is September the 3rd in the year of our Lord, 2017. And this is one a day for the soul. Now, I trust that your mind is upon the things of God, that your soul is blessed, and that your heart is hungry. Our text this morning is going to be taken out of Ephesians chapter 4, and I want to look at the first couple of verses. And then after we spend a few moments looking at this passage, I want to answer a question from a viewer. So let's begin in Ephesians chapter 4, and let's begin at verse 1, and we'll read down to verse 3. Now, Paul, who's in prison at this point, is writing to the church at Ephesus, and he says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, I beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. What does that mean? It means this, friends. It means that we are ambassadors For the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, a king isn't out in the common areas among the common people. He's up on the throne, but he has those who work beneath him, his ambassadors, and they're carrying out duties that have been entrusted to them by the king on a daily basis. And that's what Paul is saying here. Paul is saying, look, Jesus is upon the throne. But he has designated you and commissioned you as his ambassadors. So you go among the common people. You go to the common areas and you be a light. You be a representation of the Lord Jesus. And you're not going to do this by acting like the rest of the world. There has to be something special about you, something different about you. So God is in his awesome wonder, has placed his spirit within you. The same spirit that possesses him, that completes him. He has given it to you so that you can walk in the world different from the rest of the world. And that's what Paul is saying. He's saying, walk worthy. Make Jesus proud. Now stop and think about your life for just a moment. Do you make him proud? In all things that you do, in all things that you think, in all choices that you make, do you make him proud? Are you faithful and obedient in all areas? Walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Friends, this is a matter of the heart. It's a position of the heart, meek and lowly, subservient. We're not after control and power. We're not domineering. We're lowly and meek, long-suffering, and we forbear one another in love and endeavor or strive to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. The unity of the Spirit. Now, as we have discussed, the Spirit is love. Love is the Spirit. Not love as we know it as mankind, but true, holy, divine, pure, sanctifying love. And where is that love represented best? 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And before we look at what love is, look at 1 Corinthians 13, 8. Love never fails. Now keep that in mind as we read this. Love suffers long, never failing. Love is kind, never failing. Love does not envy, ever. Love does not vaunt itself, ever. Love is not puffed up, ever. Love does not behave itself unseemly, ever. Love does not seek its own, ever. It is not easily provoked, ever. Love does not think evil of anyone or anything at any time, ever. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, ever. But here is what love does. 
Love rejoices in the truth. The truth is the word of God. The truth is the Lord Jesus and everything contained therein. And love rejoices in this. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 real quick. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, love is true. Whatsoever things are honest, love is honest. Whatsoever things are just, love is just. Whatsoever things are pure, love is pure. Whatsoever things are lovely, love is lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report, love is of a good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, Think on these things. Friends, if we didn't meet together for another month, that would be enough to occupy us. That would be enough to keep our days full in striving to be all that the Lord has commanded of us. And I pray that he will give you his strength and power that you may do so. Now, before we end today, I want to look at a question that arose from a viewer after a video we did a couple of days ago. And basically the question was this. In talking about the things that are going on in the news, the rioting in the streets, the burning down of buildings, the tearing down of statues, how does that apply to at, as to what Jesus did in the temple when he ran out the money changers? And quite simply, it doesn't apply at all. And anyone who tries to use what Jesus did in defense of what's going on out there right now is absolutely annihilating the scripture because it has no correlation whatsoever. Exactly as I said the other day, this comes from the human heart in a place that is terribly wicked in men. And what's interesting is I told you yesterday that you need to occupy yourself. You need to spend some time in Google, in YouTube, listening to these question and answer times by John MacArthur. Well, he just put out his most recent. Now, he has over 100 of them. I've watched every one of them twice. I'm going to sit down and watch them again because they are just so full of truth, Bible wisdom, and Bible knowledge. And so I can't encourage you enough to do it. But he just put out his most recent one a day or two ago. And after I did that video, I watched it. And in part of his new question and answer period, he addresses the question of what's going on right now. And, and as I knew, it's on the hearts of many people. They're trying to figure it out for themselves. And what really touched me and blessed me is that the answer and the response that John MacArthur gives confirms what God through his Holy Spirit had already told and shown me. And so I want to end this morning by let you listening to this clip. It's only a few minutes long, so be blessed as Jesus wills. Until next time, friends, I love you. I'll see you on the next video. Now enjoy this clip. Um, the human heart is desperately wicked, and the human heart is hostile toward God and self-centered and proud and selfish and angry. What Charlottesville simply demonstrates is that fallen humanity is corrupt. All I see in that is the justification of anger. Look, that's, that's not about slavery. That's not about something that happened 200 years ago. That's an opportunity for angry, hostile, self-willed, selfish people to explode and feel good about it because they can get away with it when there's enough of them, too many of them to stop. No one tolerates white supremacists. When I was down in Mississippi years ago, I was arrested by those kinds of people for preaching the gospel in black high schools, and I was put in jail, and they took all my money away. I, I know that. I was with the black leaders in Jackson, Mississippi, in, in Charles Evers, Medgar Evers' brother. Charles was the first black mayor in the South. Charles, his brother Medgar was the first martyr of the Civil Rights Movement. He was killed. I was in the room when Martin Luther King was assassinated with those black leaders. And we went to Memphis and I stood 
on the blood spots on that motel with those men. And I stood in the little bathroom on top of the toilet where James Earl Ray shot him out the window. Those men were my friends. That was my community. I couldn't buy groceries in that town when I got back. I, in Mendenhall, Mississippi, I couldn't eat in a restaurant. I, I've seen all that. That's, that's not what's going on there in Charlottesville or any of these other demonstrations. This is the wretched, fallen human heart feeling like it can rise to any level that is not completely controlled. And let me tell you what gets you there. Number one, the human heart is evil. War is in the heart. Men will kill. That's how they function. But God has built three restraints into society. Restraint number one is in the individual, and it's the conscience. But the conscience reacts to a moral law. So if you have a whole generation of young people that have been taught a twisted, perverted, inverted, upside down and backwards moral law, then their conscience can't function. The, the conscience is, is simply a recognition mechanism that says, that's wrong, that's right, that excuses and accuses. But it only can function where there's a sound moral law written in the heart. So you have a whole generation of these people, this generation, who have had a totally perverted sense of what morality is. And the dominant part of this new morality is, I'm the most important person in the world. It's all about me. It's the selfie culture. So conscience is now crippled. Secondly, God put fathers and mothers in a family to bring a rod to discipline people in order to subdue their evil. If the family is destroyed and the family breaks down, then you have no control over those people. So conscience can't function because the moral law has been literally destroyed. Families don't function, so there is no discipline learned. There's no sense of what is right, what is acceptable behavior. And the only institution left that God ordained was the police. And the police were given a sword to subdue those who do evil. When you assault the police long enough that you diminish their authority and the sense of fear and the sense of reverence that a society has to have for those who police them, then all hell will break loose. Conscience isn't functioning, family's not functioning, and the police have been stripped of their powers in the social consciousness. You literally have unleashed the human heart at its worst level. This is not about race, and this is not about what happened in America in the past. No one can tolerate white supremacists. No one can tolerate the Ku Klux Klan. One of my dear friends, John Perkins, his brother was killed in front of him by the Ku Klux Klan in the street. No one can tolerate that. That is just one manifestation of the evil of the human heart. And we have only begun to see it once it's unleashed and it's going to start coming in all kinds of forms because of the breakdown of moral law, the breakdown of the conscience, the breakdown of the family, and because of the incessant assaults on governing authorities. So get ready. I don't think it's going to go away.